um, in just in just a second. But uh, if you if you load up the scene um, and to see like the first thing to note is when we load it up, we can actually see. So we are looking at light a light value, right? Now, if we render this scene and make sure that we're in hardware 2.0 and render, we can see that we do have a light in there. So what's going on? If we open up the, uh, sorry, the render settings and scroll down to the common, right down the bottom to render options, you'll notice that there's enable default light. So if we untick that and then render again, we will get all black. We know there's something there because I can turn on the alpha channel and see, see it's there. But yeah, so usually you leave that on, on by default. So to see what the lights are in our scene, we need to turn the light, use all lights. And now we can see uh, how the lights are affecting excluding that default light. So the thing is with the default light gets turned off as soon as you create a light in your scene. Now the thing about lighting is it's quite cool because most lights are similar across different programs. So under create we've got lights and if I click on this top bar it will just separate that window. And we've got a few different lights that we can um, uh, look at. Now, the first light is an ambient light, and I wouldn't recommend that. Um, it just creates an overall light value on all the objects. And yeah, but it can be prob problematic, um, but it can be useful. Uh, so here, here it is. And you can see everything's like sort of washed out, which just doesn't look so good, but you could in, in reduce the intensity. And so, yeah, we kind of like lose all the detail. It's, I don't like them. I don't use them. So the next light is a directional light. And this light basically is like a wall of light that comes in one direction. So it really doesn't matter where you put the light. It only matters how you rotate it. Now, with lighting, if you want to see shadows, we need to turn on shadows in our scene and then you can see the shadows. So you'll notice with this light, also it doesn't matter what size this light is, it doesn't change the intensity, it's all about the rotation. But have a look at the uh, shadow. So what we've got is we've got uh, real-time lighting without ray tracing, okay? So it's actually faking the shadows using an image map and the image, the scene here is so big, it's quite large, that the image is getting really pixelated. Now we can improve that by going into the lights attributes and go to shadows. And instead of using ray trace shadows, which we don't have, we'll use uh, depth map shadows. And when you do that, you can see that the image resolution changes, but you can increase the size of that. And you can you'll notice that there's you know sharp anti there's no anti-aliasing happening, but we can introduce some filter onto that as well, so we get sort of a softer shadow. Generally speaking, though, directional lights don't often have you know good sort of soft shadows. But there we go. Now with the directional light as well, we've got our color, so we could change it to you know sort of a sky blue if we wanted to. Uh, something, you know, super subtle, something like that. Maybe a little bit more like that. So now we have, you know, the impression of the sky. The other thing that we want to be careful of is not overexposing. So what does overexposing mean? It basically removes detail. So no longer we can see the curvature and this big area here becomes one value. So if you do any post-production to that, it just clips. Um, there's no uh, ability to re remove it or reduce it down. So we want to make sure that we're not overexposing and that we can see all the detail across the object. 
Okay, so that's the directional light. Now let's have a look at, so I'll just, I might just hide that one. Um, we'll have a look at a point light. So a point light, as the name suggests, is light that comes from a single point and uh, gets emitted in all directions outside of that point. So these are like really handy, especially in real time. Um, and the reason why they, they're super handy is because we can use it to illuminate our subject um, quite uh, precisely, which I'll show you in a minute. Before I do that, though, you'll notice, look, if I raise my light up and my light at the moment is at 61 units high, let's change that to 6 million or and notice that it's still illuminating the ground, okay? So it doesn't matter how far away my light is, it's still, uh, the light is, is still present. Now that's not really how light works in, in nature, and that's because there's no decay on the light. So with a point light and some of the other lights, we w this isn't a, a, an option with the directional light, but we've got the ability to turn on a decay. So we can go linear decay. And now it has a fall off. So the idea is with this, you change the intensity so you can see your, uh, your character. So this, this light is actually a good fill, fill light. So um, we we'll might, we'll might talk about that a little bit more in a bit. So just uh, with decay, there's linear and then there's quadratic. Uh, quadratic is more for phys physical based lighting um, and it's a higher fall off rate. Um, linear is just uh, uh, less, less fall off basically. Okay, so that's our point light. I'll just hide that one as well. Next down is a spotlight. And when you're starting off, you go, oh yeah, spotlight. I know what a spotlight is. I'll just use a spotlight. So everyone tends to use spotlights a lot, probably too much at the start. Um, and yeah, they're okay. But again, they're a, a light that has a single source where the rays are coming out of that single source. So you don't get really soft shadows or anything like that, especially when using offline renderings. Um, but, you know, they're, they're useful. And some of the things you can do, again, we can go uh, decay. We can increase the intensity. We can change the cone angle. We can change the, the penumbra angle as well as the fall off. So they can, it can be, you know, quite subtle. So that looks quite good. Um, but a better light to use is actually the area light. And the reason for that is the area light emits light. And this light actually matters what size it is because because um, it basically mimics light coming through the whole uh, polygon or whole surface. And it emits uh, multiple rays, so you get sort of more softer shadows. Now, uh, the question was, why, why do I have to increase the intensity so high to actually see it? And the reason is because they've set up these lights now that they're, they're quadratic, um, uh, you know, fall off calculations and so forth. So if I'll just turn linear, oh, we'll just say no decay for, for a moment. They've, they've introduced this normalized um, uh, option here. And so what normalized does is it makes it more physically accurate. So if we turn normalize off, you get to see um, it, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot brighter. So we can just use normalize off for, um, you know, real time, and that would be fine. And we can just change the intensity. 
how we want it. Um, or you can use normalize on. Let me just double click on here. If I change this to component, I can then just pull that light back along the same axes. And again, we can uh, change the shadows so that we get nicer, softer shadows. But it is all real time. It's all just image uh, shadows. So we don't get sort of, you know, amazing looking shadows in, in real time. But, you know, they still still work. So the, uh, the area light is a really good key light. And you can see with this key light, I've now got real intense shadows on the other side. I can't see the opposite side of my object. So if I bring back my point light, I can now just change the value of that. So it highlights or you know brings back those shadows, which is which is nice. And then I can also, I'll just duplicate this light. Cloned it at the back. I can also use a point light as some rim light to give the object more three-dimensionality. And the rim light's probably the hardest thing to get, get right. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see it, see it there now. So let's just rename that rim key and fill. Now, managing lights, there's a, a really nice program, a uh, window um, inside of uh, Maya, and it's called the uh, Light Editor. So the shortcut is here, Open Light Editor. And in, within here, what we can do, we've got these two buttons on the side. So I could uh, say, turn off the rim light. And now that rim light's turned off, we'll turn it back on. And if I go in here, I can also change the intensity and so forth. So let's do that. So I'll make it a bit more intense. And I think I'll bring it forward a little bit more. It'd be good to actually keep the camera in the same spot, but that's okay. Um, so that looks, looks pretty good. But I can also click on this little icon next to it and isolate it. So I've just got that light. So maybe I'll change the color of that, make it a, a warmer light, like so. And then, yeah, I'll take, say, the key light and I'll isolate that. I'll make that a cooler light, like so. And then, yeah, say the, uh, the fill light. And I'll just make it a bit more complementary. So this is the warm light, right? And this is my color wheel. So if I want a complementary color to that that cool light that I created for the for the um, the key, and I've got this swatch up the top, I can just go to the opposite side of the wheel, and that's the complementary color. So with that, I can turn all the lights on. And there I have a really nice sort of, you know, uh, soft light. Now notice, notice there's lots of shadows on the ground. And one of the cool things about 3D is we can actually turn some of the shadows off. So we don't need a shadow on the fill light. So I'll just go into shadows and I'll uncheck uh, ray tracing shadows. And we probably don't need one on the rim light as well. So it would be that one and I'll uncheck those shadows as well. So we're kind of like eliminating, eliminating the shadows. It does tend to go through the object though a bit, I believe. Yeah, it does, that's interesting. So we might just leave it on that one. Okay, so there we go. There's a three point lighting, lighting setup and all using uh, real time real-time lights.